Today we're going to talk about the role that beta blockers have in reduced ejection heart failure and why we don't use calcium channel blockers as well. So first we have to understand the mechanism of action of both beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Both have ultimately the same effect on the heart. They are both negative inotropes, which means they decrease contractility of the heart. And they are also negative chronotropes, which means they decrease heart rate. Chrono meaning time. So both beta blockers and calcium channel blockers have these two effects on the heart. But in order to understand why the guidelines recommend beta blockers for reduced ejection fraction heart failure, but not calcium channel blockers, specifically we're talking about non-dihydropyridines for rapamil diltiazem, we need to understand the pathophys of reduced ejection fraction heart failure. What happens in a patient with reduced ejection fraction heart failure is because the heart is not pumping as well, the heart gets blasted with norepinephrine and other catecholamines. So the sympathetic nervous system is revved up and activated, and the heart gets blasted with all of these catecholamines. And what this does is it helps increase contractility of the heart, makes the heart stronger, and ultimately helps maintain uh, heart function. But what happens over time is that as the heart keeps getting blasted with all of these catecholamines, the heart gets bigger and bigger over time and becomes hypertrophied. And what happens here is you end up with a big baggy heart. It's just poops out after being blasted by all these catecholamines. So this is where beta blockers fit in. Beta blockers work on the adrenergic system and they block this sympathetic surge. And this is the disease oriented evidence, the mechanism by which beta blockers can be helpful in reduced ejection fraction heart failure. Now, we, they, beta blockers are still negative inotropes though, so you need to start with a low dose and titrate up. Because if we slam a patient with a high dose beta blocker, you're going to decrease contractility as we mentioned before because it's a negative inotrope and that can harm the patient. So you want to start low and titrate up to target doses that were found in the trials. Now this mechanism of action of how it helps in heart failure matches the patient-oriented evidence in that it decreases mortality and morbidity and that was shown in the trials. Now on the other hand, Calcium channel blockers, the non-dihydropyridines like verapamil diltiazem, they do not have any effect on the adrenergic system. So they do not block the sympathetic surge the way beta blockers do. In fact, remember, they also are still negative inotropes. So you could, in fact, it has none of this sympathetic cut of a advantage. All it does is decrease contractility of the heart, which is obviously a bad thing in somebody with already reduced contractility. So you never want to use verapamil or diltiazem or any of the non-dihydropyridines in somebody with reduced ejection fraction. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful.